He has to limit that movement by cutting off the ring, and rather than going for the knockout, both fighters want to work the body. The both of the fighters very close in size. The reach advantage to Whitaker. Haugen comes in a pound light at 134. Greg Haugen and the number one ranked... Whitaker, the hometown hero from Norfolk. His record, 16-1-0 with 10 knockouts in his folder. Al Rothenberg is the referee for this afternoon's fight. And... The champion and the number one challenger here in the IBF gets set to get it on. One thing you'll notice right here from the opening bell, Dan, despite the fact that we talk so much about Greg Haugen's toughness, he is not a brawler. He has developed into a very clever boxer. He's not easy to hit. He's an effective counterpuncher, and it's very difficult to shake his concentration. The key question here is whether Haugen will be able to maintain his effectiveness in the face of Pernell Whitaker's speed. One of the things we have to address right off the bat is the fact that Pernell Whitaker fights as a southpaw and what kind of problems this might cause Greg Haugen because it certainly does confuse most of his opponents. Well, you just saw Haugen flip uh, Pernell on the uh, head with a, on the chin with the right hand there. Uh, Greg Haugen has, has fought three southpaws. He's never looked good against them. He says that he's learned how to fight southpaws in training for this fight. He says the key punch is his left hook. He wants to keep Whitaker in front of him with the left hook. There, good left hand lead by Purnell. Purnell Whitaker in the blue trunks, Greg Haugen in the black trunks, and Purnell Whitaker saying before this fight that he's more than willing to work the body, and that's one of the things we've seen in Whitaker's recent bouts is his ability to be patient and work over the body of an opponent. And Greg Haugen does that also very, very well. You mentioned earlier about Haugen being more than just a tough guy. I think he really illustrated that when he won the title back from Vinny Pazienza, the way he effectively used the jab in that fight. It's really a good illustration. And another solid left from Whitaker's score. Haugen shaking his head, spitting at Whitaker just then. He will do anything, Greg Haugen will, to shake his opponent's concentration. He is able to keep his concentration very well. Even when he's being hit, he's always looking to hit you back. Good illustration there as Whitaker attempting to back out of a clinch and, and off balance a little bit. And Haugen, ever the opportunist, doesn't hesitate at all and goes right after. One thing different right away that you see from Pernell Whitaker, who fought the first time for the title against Jose Luis Ramirez, he is not moving as much laterally. He is not running away as much. He is actually right now stalking Greg Haugen. Almost everyone who watched the Ramirez Whitaker fight felt that Whitaker was the winner, but they all did agree if anything cost him the fight, it was his fighting out of a retreat for the last five rounds of the of the fight. You know, one other thing these two fighters have in, in common is the fact that each has a loss in his record, and both those losses, uh, Haugen to Vinny Pazienza in the first fight, and Pernell Whitaker to Jose Luis Ramirez, were very, very controversial. Almost anybody, everybody in boxing thought they won, and they should be undefeated. We're inside the last 10 seconds of the first round. This is the IBF Lightweight Championship from Hampton, Virginia. We'll be back. The second round gets underway and make no mistake about it. There are very few people in this building rooting for Greg Haugen. It is Pernell Whitaker's hometown and he enjoys both the attention and the support that he gets from this crowd. Greg Haugen says that he is fed by being the villain in, in somebody else's hometown that gives him energy. He also says that this crowd will not allow Pernell Whitaker to run from him, that they will force Pernell Whitaker to fight him. And Greg says that that plays in his hands. Do you think Haugen learned something going to Providence, Rhode Island to fight Vinny Pazienza when he lost the decision up there? Oh, and a solid right from Whitaker. Haugen tried to move away from it, but Purnell's hands just uh, got that jab there too quick. One of the things Greg Haugen might have expected from Purnell Whitaker was for him to fight going backwards. But look how aggressive Whitaker is being and, and Greg Haugen trying to shake it off, saying nothing's bothering me. I'm well, not sure it, that's the case. It may not be bothering him, but it's definitely scoring points. There's Karen Haugen, Greg's wife, watching. 
They've been together a long time. They moved together to Alaska from Washington when they were 16 years old. Another good stinging stiff jab by Cornell Whitaker. Greg Haugen said that he thought Vinny Pazienza was every bit as quick as Pernell Whitaker. Keep in mind that he's never been in the ring with Whitaker, but I doubt that's the case, Alex. Yeah, I think if we could interview him right now, he might take that back. Yeah, I think he might as well. Again, the right jab from Pernell Whitaker, and ooh, a trio of jabs from Greg Haugen, the middle one connected. Pernell Whitaker complaining to Rothenberg about Haugen's head. Both these fighters like to bend over to get leverage for their position. Well, there is the warning to Haugen, but Whitaker issued a warning of his own as he connected with the left as Haugen came in low. That's a double loss for Greg Haugen. Not a great deal of fighting in reverse by these two. One of the interesting things coming in, Dan, was who would initiate the action? Both of them like a counter punch. We saw some counter punching there by Pernell Whitaker after Haugen started. And a good left hand by Whitaker. And there he goes to the body, and Greg Haugen is covering up. He's covering up, but those punches are getting through. He can well, shake his head and he can smile all he wants, but Pernell Whitaker has gotten out of the gate much faster than the champion Greg Haugen. I think you're right, Alex. Anytime a guy tries to laugh it off, he's trying to disguise something. And Pernell Whitaker has dominated here in the second round. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Just underway in round number three. Dan Deardorff and Alex Wallow ringside here in Hampton, Virginia. The IBF World Lightweight hey, Championship. Greg right Haugen and Pernell Whitaker. Whitaker in the blue trunks, Haugen in the black. And the first two rounds, at least on our unofficial card, goes to Whitaker. And a good combination there, though, by Greg Haugen. First one was real close. I thought Pernell took over a little bit in the second round. This is the form that we expected. Greg Haugen has always been a slow starter. He felt that if he could win two out of the first four rounds... Oh, wow. Well, Haugen tried to laugh after the first jab, but the second jab... Now, there is a study in wiping the smile off someone's face. I was just starting to say that Greg Haugen thought if he could win two out of the first four rounds, he would definitely win the fight. He's lost the first two in our judgment, and he's got to get in there. He can't fall too far behind. Well, he certainly, I think, should maybe get away from smiling so much in the ring and get down to some serious fighting and trying to stay away from the jab of Whitaker. Another solid right jab puts Haugen back on the ropes. And Haugen, for some reason, Alex, keeping his left way down, giving a perfect avenue for that jab. Well, Greg Haugen doesn't block punches. He generally leans back for them. He has good enough reflexes with most fighters. He is able to lean back and make them miss and then jump in with his counter punches. But Whitaker's punches are just getting there faster than any, any jab ever has. It's also coming from the other side. It's a right jab. He has to make two adjustments here. A, he's got to, Haugen does. He's got to adjust. See Whitaker's speed, and he's got to adjust to a southpaw style. Easier said than done, wouldn't you say? It has been so far. And the right jab, and then quickly following it up with a flurry, right, right, has been right, right, extremely right. effective for Sweet P, Pernell Whitaker. And something he's always done well is throw the flurry. Certainly never be accused of being a one-punch guy, Pernell Whitaker. It was the first good solid body punch by Haugen, and you saw Whitaker come to the left of the body. I thought it was a little bit low. And they, again, the left of the body by Haugen. Remember, George Chimera's Haugen's trainer said, we have to take away Whitaker's legs with body punches. Again, Haugen laying on the ropes. Now he tries to turn him. You think somehow Haugen thinks that... The longer this fight goes, the more the advantage might swing his way? Oh, he definitely thinks that. He says that Whitaker tired against Ramirez. He tired against Mayweather. Good body punch right to the body by Whitaker. And you saw Haugen off balance. And again on the ropes. And a right uppercut from Whitaker got through the defense of Haugen. And you can see the chin fly back. Three good rounds. We'll be back for round four in a moment. This was in the third round, a good look at the right jab of Pernell Whitaker and how easily it gets over the left that's low of Greg Haugen and 
Here we are, the beginning of round number four. Fernell Whitaker said before the fight, as did Lou Duva's co-manager, that the jab can set up the body punches. Well, Haugen is intentionally going back against the ropes and covering up. He's really not being forced there by Whitaker. And another solid left by Fernell Whitaker, a left hook score. The only thing you can think about that tactic, Dan, is if it is a tactic, is that he's trying to let Whitaker punch himself out. What he's doing is giving away all the early rounds. And I wonder if at the same time he might not be underestimating Pernell Whitaker's power. I mean, no one ever labeled him a knockout artist. And again, Haugen sits back in the corner and takes a beating to the body. Pernell Whitaker learned a little lesson there. He got, was concentrating so much on his offense that Haugen finished that exchange with a right hand to the head. Pernell must keep his hands up on the inside. Again, good stiff jab backs Haugen up. Greg Haugen again in there leading with the head. Well, you would think that Haugen's the last guy in the world to want to lead with his head. He's got a, a huge scar on his right eye. Another low blow by Whitaker. He got that cut in the Santana fight in April's last year and has only fought 10 rounds since then. So it's certainly not a given that that scar and that cut is not going to open up on him again. There was a good double jab from Greg Haugen. As you said earlier in the fight, Dan, how can establish his jab in the first and the second pass he ends the fight? We haven't seen that much of it here. He must out jab Whitaker to get in this fight. Colonel Whitaker certainly not hesitating at all. If Hawkins going to sit on the ropes, that Whitaker's going to take advantage of it. Again, Cornell but must be very careful that he doesn't get sloppy on the inside there. He had Hawkins on the ropes. And he was, he was letting his hands go, but he was not covering up after punching. And Haugen did come back with punches. They didn't score, but they might in later rounds. Greg Haugen's face beginning to show the wear and tear underneath both of his eyes, high on his cheekbones. They've been stinging from the jab of Pernell Whitaker. Solid lead to the body, and ooh, a low blow by Whitaker, who Alex, you and I talked about it before the fight, has a history of low blow. Well, all good body punches occasionally hit low. Again, the jab. But the key here is whether Whitaker gets warned for it. And so far, he has not been warned. If the referee's going to allow it, Fernell's going to do that all day long. And that right connected, Haugen driven backwards, and through four, you'd have to say this fight belongs to Fernell Whitaker. Queen! During the last break between rounds, George Tamiris, the trainer of Greg Haugen, imploring his fighter that you can't do this just one punch at a time. you got to put together a flurry. You've got to be a combination puncher. And Alex, he's exactly right. Well, he's right, but that really isn't Greg Haugen's style. Greg has always been a guy who will pick with a shot, then let you mess and come back with a shot. He really hasn't been the kind of combination puncher that Fernell Whitaker is. It's been successful for him in the past, but uh, whether he can you know, change his style right here, in a uh, against maybe the toughest opponent of his career remains to be seen. How can just not getting off on that exchange? How he can stand there and let Whitaker hit him three and four times and not let anything come back? There are single punch, but single punches aren't going to get it done. Frankly, I think Greg Haugen is a little taken back with the way Pernell Whitaker is fighting him so aggressively. I got the sense in talking to him that he, he really thought that Pernell Whitaker was going to be the guy to try to use his foot speed, use all the ring, and really try to move Haugen around the ring. Haugen was talking, Alex, about wanting to cut off the ring. That's that right. hasn't been a problem today for him. And then the, there, there's the first showboating by Pernell Whitaker. Pernell says, when I showboat, it's the equivalent of a, of, a, of a basketball player with a flashy dunk. I'm trying to intimidate the opposition. Well, he's tried that behind the back punch before, and... A scoring combination by Pernell Whitaker. Now, Greg Haugen covered up in the corner, but I don't believe he was hurt. We want to alert our ABC stations along the line that at the conclusion of this round, we're going to be taking a station break. And a solid left to the chin of Haugen. I'll tell you something about Greg Haugen. He's not going to be intimidated by backhand punches, but he is going to be taken out of this fight by the kind of punching that Pernell Whitaker is doing. He has been today. A minute left in the fifth round here. Hampton, Virginia. Norfolk right across the bay here just is the home of Pernell Whitaker. And there's a look at Karen Haugen.
imploring her husband, Greg. She's been around the fight game long enough to know that he's trailing in this fight. Right now, the only question in this fight really is, will Whitaker run out of gas? I mean, if he can maintain this pace, we talked about it at the top, if he can maintain, if he has a toughness to keep up this pace, he's going to be a world champion. And you saw the look on Greg Haugen's face, who felt that Pernell Whitaker hit him with another low blow. Coming to the end of the fifth round, this for the IBF Lightweight Championship. ABC's Wide World of Sports will continue after this word from our ABC station. This is the beginning of the sixth round. And on our scorecard, the first five rounds belong completely to Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, I think the only round you could make a case for Haugen was the first in which there wasn't really much to choose between the two of them. Again, Greg Haugen just laying on the ropes. Well, I think you touched on it early, Alex. Clearly a strategy is that he's hoping that it becomes a question of stamina for Whitaker later on in this fight. Yeah, but Greg Haugen's not an idiot. I mean, he can tell that that strategy is just giving away too many rounds right now. I mean, if you're a big bomber, you can afford to give away early rounds and make it up with one punch in the late round. But Greg Haugen is not that much of a bomber. He did have one punch knockouts in his early in his career, but since then, he's really been a distance kind of fighter. Well, then tough to understand his strategy, unless it's just a... Oh, and there, a solid blow from Whitaker, and that is a knockdown. A tremendous inside left hand counter punch. Greg Haugen was jumping in. Pernell Whitaker timed it perfectly and got caught. First time he has ever been down as a pro or an amateur. Haugen acting like it wasn't a knockdown. That's the only way I can interpret the look on his face. Ho, 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 ho. Doing his best to say that it didn't hurt me, but Al Rothenberg, the referee, gave him the standing eight. The crowd here at, uh, at Hampton Coliseum starting to chant, Pete, 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 for no Whitaker's nickname. Nobody around here calls him Brunel, we do, but he's known here as Pete. His nickname, Sweet P, actually came about by a group of his friends at the ringside one day calling to him Sweet Pete. Sweet Pete in the media at the along media row alongside the ring thought they were saying Sweet P and it stuck. I don't think any of his friends walk up and say, Hi, Sweet P, how you doing? And I don't think Greg Haugen ever imagined that Brunel Whitaker could knock him. Excuse me, knock him down. Everything being set up by the right jab. And another combination. And as Haugen tries to cover up, two left uppercuts from Pernell Whitaker split his glove. That's back in the head. Whitaker said he, was gonna, he could fight on the inside with Greg Haugen. There, you just saw Haugen make Whitaker miss the first punch. But when he went to counter punch, Purnell was right on his chest. He couldn't, didn't have the room to get off an effective counter punch. You see Greg jumping straight in again. Better watch himself and not get caught again with that little left hand counter. Again, there it was. The left hand and Greg Haugen walks right into it. We're gonna stay here between rounds. The bell sounds, that's the conclusion of round six. We're halfway through a scheduled 12 and the crowd Roars its approval for Pernell Whitaker. You saw both men trying to posture and shake the other man's concentration. It's not going to happen. Watch from the left hand. Boom, right there. Perfectly timed. Right on the chin. Haugen tried to keep himself up, but just couldn't regain his balance. Another angle. Watch the left hand. Boom. And he tripped. You saw it on that angle. You saw that Haugen, in addition to the force of the blow, he did trip. Over Pernell Whitaker's right left. foot. But you do have like to agree with Al Rothenberg, the referee. Absolutely. He has to rule that a knockdown. Absolutely. Okay. Get over there with those left hooks. And those work on his body this round. Work hard. Get them hard in the body. The voice of George Chimera is the trainer for Howard. Second out. Take control. Second out. Take control. Stay there, Pete. Stay there, Pete. George Chimera has to keep telling Greg what to do. The problem is. Can Greg be effective in doing it? Can he put together? It's easy to say left hook, right hand. It's just very tough against someone as skilled as Pernell Whitaker has been, who's giving away as little as he's giving away, to put it into action in the ring. 
seems that everything that Greg Haugen has attempted to do for Nell Whitaker has had an answer. A solid right. You can see the water fly from the head of Greg Haugen and Brunel Whitaker in complete control of this fight. The main thing is he's not letting Haugen get off. Greg is just not able to counter punch. He's effectively taken that away from him. He just hasn't been able to find a way to get off. There are punching opportunities for Haugen, but Brunel is so quick that he's just not able to take advantage of him. And if Haugen is hoping that Whitaker will fade in the latter round, I'm not sure that's going to happen. I looked at Whitaker over in his corner on his stool. In between rounds, Alex, and, and he's not even breathing through his mouth. And they're getting to the point. I mean, it's still relatively early in this fight. We're only in round seven. Again, you know, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, Greg Haugen just has to know by now. He can't lay on the ropes and, and take that kind of punch and expect to win rounds. And make no mistake of it. He's there intentionally. Whitaker's being aggressive, but when Haugen finds himself on the ropes, no attempt to get off. The point I was trying to make, Dan, is we're getting to the point, even though it's early, where Haugen needs a knockout. He's going to need a knockout to win. The right jab, getting in there consistently. And you might have heard Lou Dubin in Whitaker's corner saying, double it up, double it up, and he did. Cornell Whitaker has scored on about six consecutive right jabs. You see how he can move to the left there. You see him trying now, the little lateral movement from Pete, from Cornell Whitaker. And you see how he's trying to cut the ring off. He might be getting there, but he isn't letting his punches go when he does cut the ring off. Well, one of the questions about Greg Haugen is his lack of what you would call sensational lateral movement. That's hurting him now as Cornell Whitaker scores on four blows. You know, Lou Duva, that's the first time I've ever seen Lou Duva for a consecutive 10 seconds with nothing to say. <laughs> Whitaker's doing everything right. We may replay that later. <laughs> body punch, body punch. And those were clean body punches. Those were above the belt. Very difficult when both men are bent over like that to get home legal blows, but Whitaker did it. And he did the it again just there. The maturation of Purnell Whitaker continues. Seven solid rounds. What do I the opening seconds of the eighth round, this the IBF lightweight championship, and Al Rothenberg calls a timeout. Dawn of Greg Haugen. There was a controversy in the dressing rooms before this fight having to do with the taping on Pernell Whitaker's glove. They made him re-glove after Keith Slevin, one of Greg Haugen's seconds, uh, protested the, uh, the way that Pernell Whitaker's glove had been put on, but uh, they did that... Uh, and it was, a, again, Brunel Whitaker just said, It's still loose. Right the reason Brunel right. pointed it out is, he's in danger. It's not Greg Haugen. If that tape flicks in Brunel Whitaker's eye, it could temporarily lose the sight of one eye and be a real big problem for him. That's why he's not going to let Haugen come out with it. Not to mention, visually, the distraction it causes. It takes your eye off of what's happening. I think these two guys are concentrating so much, you know, there could be a whole roll of tape thrown into the ring and they wouldn't notice. This is the eighth round of this IBF lightweight championship fight. Greg Haugen in the black trunks. The defending champion, the number one challenger in the blue, is Pernell Whitaker. And this fight's taking place here at the Hampton Coliseum in Hampton, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia is the hometown of Pernell Whitaker. And he has dominated this fight. On our unofficial scorecard, he's won all seven rounds. With action like that, you see, that's just inexplicable. That just isn't Greg Haugen. How can he stand there and take seven punches and not let anything come back? I can understand him getting hit. He even said yesterday, I know I'm going to get hit. I'm not going to fight a fighter as good as Whitaker and not get hit. But he's let himself be taken out of this fight. And the question you have to ask is, it can't be all Whitaker's quickness. It can't be all Whitaker's left-handed stance. I think right about now, you have to say that Greg Haugen, who weighed in at 134 pounds for this fight, told us he came down from 155 pounds he may just have been a lightweight too long. He just may be dead at the weight. He made the weight very carefully. I mean, he didn't lose at all on you know, the day of the fight. Again, just posing, just target practice for Whitaker. I was saying that 
Haugen didn't lose it uh, all at the last minute. He wasn't depleted from uh, a rush to make weight, but he just seems dead. Look how alertly Pernell Whitaker avoided being run into the ropes by Greg Haugen. And a good look there at how Haugen got his feet tangled up. The problems in fighting a southpaw, both fighters with their lead feet stepping on one another. Well, it's a problem for Southpaw as well. I mean, he's used to, if he fights, if he fought a, actually, it's, the reason it's not a problem for left-handers, he's used to fighting right-handers. He's used to having trouble with his right foot. During the course of the fight, take a look at the lead feet of both of these men and how often they step on one another. Pernell Whitaker, as Alex said, always fighting right-handers, used to that. And that solid left scores, rocks the head of Greg Haugen, who's faced and cheek area is starting to swell considerably and another left and Greg Haugen right now looking anything but like the champion uh, he looks like a punching bag I and mean, they should just put Everlast on him and let Whitaker punch I mean again that time Haugen complaining about Whitaker's head what's the head that's the last time and Rothenberg warned Haugen told him it was the last time the eighth round is coming to a close. Watch your head. This championship bout scheduled for 12. It would be very difficult to look at two corners in between rounds and see them as diverse as the Haugen and Whitaker corners. Greg Haugen looking very much like a man who's been in a war, and Pernell Whitaker looked like he was reading the Saturday afternoon newspaper over in his corner, Alex Wallow. Totally, totally composed, totally fixed on his purpose. Didn't even seem to acknowledge uh, what George Benton, I'm sure he was listening, but just seemed just totally fixed on the man across the ring from him. Pernell Whitaker in the blue trunks, the number one ranked contender by all three sanctioning bodies. Julio Cesar Chavez, the WBA, WBC lightweight champion. There again, you see Haugen cut the ring off. He moved to his left. He beat Whitaker to the spot and moved with him. He didn't let his hands go. He didn't punch. Can't keep your title if you don't let your hands go. Another solid left from Pernell Whitaker, who lets Haugen come in, lead with that head, and then takes advantage of it, scoring repeatedly. You know, Al Rothenberg is wrong here. The referee is warning Greg Haugen for, for coming in with his head. First of all, in that instance, Greg Haugen's head was pushed down by Whitaker. But second of all, Al Rothenberg, who has extensive experience as an amateur referee, in the amateurs, you cannot drop your head down. You can't really get it down at all like that. But in the pros, as long as you're not trying to butt the man, you can drop your head as low as you want. I don't think, in any cases, Greg Haugen tried to butt for no Whitaker. Al Rothenberg, a veteran referee here in the Virginia area. Former fighter pilot, World War II, Korea. They've worked some of Pernell Whitaker's fights in the past. The other thing that Pernell Whitaker's little clever movement has done is if Greg Haugen was going to have power, he can't generate any power because he's just arm punching right now. He can't load a punch up because if he loads a punch up, Whitaker's out of range of it. He's got to try to get off quick punches, and that takes all the power away. He just is not getting leverage on anything. Greg Haugen just can't seem to figure out anything about Pernell Whitaker. Every move he tries, Whitaker counter punches. He can't seem to defend himself against the jab of Whitaker. And this strategy of going up against the ropes and just getting beat up, inexplicable. And Whitaker reacting to the crowd, giving them what they came to see. The first problem for Pernell Whitaker has happened. He has a little bit of a cut there on his lower lip. Not going to cause him. I don't think any problem. I don't think it's bad enough that he's going to start swallowing the blood. I would imagine that Whitaker's corner is going to tell him nine minutes of boxing. <laughs> Opening seconds of round number ten, and Greg Haugen, the champion, certainly a proud man, for the remaining nine minutes has to fight a desperate fight. Alex, he has got to look for the one blow to end it. He's not going to do it up against the rope. Just can't get any leverage when you're leaning back on the ropes. If you bounce off the ropes, you can, but when you're just leaning on the back of your heels, you can't. Hold it, hold it, I got it, hold it, I got it, I got it. Let's go. Pernell Whitaker using the left arm to try to inhibit 
Hogan from escaping, and Al Rothenberg steps in and breaks it up. Watch your head, Pete. Watch your head. Watch your head. Good counter right hand there by Haugen. In the corner of uh, Whitaker, uh, Louis Camacho working that cut in his mouth in between rounds. We want to take a moment to say hello to his regular cut man, Ace Murata, who is not here. He's at home uh, recovering from pneumonia. And all our best in a speedy recovery to Ace Murata. Another left hook coming from below. Scores for Whitaker and the right jab as well. Look at the right jab just flick out and repeatedly make contact with the face of Greg Haugen who's shown no defense at all for that jab and the ensuing follow-up left hook. We're in the 10th round, and Pernell Whitaker looks like he just came out for warm-up. Haugen again hung up on the rope, just content to stand there and take it. Talk about quickness. You saw Pernell Whitaker there triple with left hooks to the body. You can watch a lot of fights and not see that combination. Don't forget tomorrow on ABC, we've got a basketball doubleheader. First of all, Michigan will play Indiana. The Hoosier is at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. And then Temple will head to Las Vegas to battle the running rebel. ABC Sports, it gets underway 2 o'clock Eastern. About a half a minute left in the 10th round here in Hampton, Virginia. On our scorecard, Pernell Whitaker winning every round. Greg Haugen somehow has to go back to his corner and figure out, how do I solve it? How do I get in there and hopefully land the one blow that might help me retain my championship? ABC's Wide World of Sports will return after this message. This is the start of the 11th round. And Pernell Whitaker sitting in his corner between rounds. Just could not look more composed, more in control of himself, nor more confident. And for good reason, Alex, the way that he's dominated this fight. Greg Hogan thought he could come in and, and frustrate Pernell Whitaker by making a miss and by hurting him on the inside, but nothing, none of that has, has happened. I mean, it, it's been Hogan who's been frustrated. Now you see a knot on Pernell's right cheek there. You see some Vaseline on it, but uh, there is a swelling there. And then, again, for the second time, a little bit of a hot dog for Pernell Whitaker. He wants to touch gloves. Hogan says no. And he said a little bit more, too. There's Sugar Ray Leonard, a spectator here at today's fight, the WBC super middleweight champ. Now, Sugar Ray must have mixed feelings. Uh, he, his uh, lawyer, Mike Trainer, also represents Greg Haugen, so he's probably rooting for Haugen, but he also has to admire the skill of uh, an Olympian, different graduating class, not the class of 76, but the class of 84, but he's got to admire the job that Whitaker's doing here. Now, speaking of the class of 84, a couple of Pernell Whitaker's friends are here, Evander Holyfield, Eldrick Taylor, both in the audience watching Pernell Whitaker in his attempt to get his world championship. You see that just in that last exchange, not the two right jabs that Pernell finished it with, again, a right jab, but the fact that of how much he's progressed, he's keeping that left up much better than he used to. And Whitaker tried to came in, he just subtly moved it and blocked the punch. Maybe the critic and the cynic might say, well, maybe Pernell Whitaker doesn't have any knockout power. He couldn't put Greg Haugen away. Keep in mind, Greg Haugen is the world champion. And as he takes a beating, comes up laughing, but that's certainly not winning anything in the judges' eyes. But Greg Haugen had never been knocked down before Whitaker dropped him earlier in this fight. And a man of tremendous courage. But sweet bee, Pernell Whitaker, on his way. 
you got to be a real cynic to find fault with Pernell Whitaker's performance here. I'll tell you that. Wouldn't you have to be? I mean, this has been a near flawless fight by Pernell Whitaker. And you talk about not losing a round. I I'm not sure he's lost a minute of any rounds. Well, we talked about round one being fairly close, but since then, it's been an easy ride for Pernell Whitaker. And let's go to the corner. Let's go to the corner with Pernell Whitaker. One more round and it's hitting the world. Flurry action from round 11. Bunch is getting through. Haugen just covering up, doing nothing more right now than reduce to a role of trying to survive. I mean, I just don't see anything he can salvage out of this except that his pride that he wasn't knocked out. He just doesn't seem to be looking to win the fight. And it's not the late round. I mean, this was his posture beginning. What about the stamina of Pernell Whitaker? Look at Whitaker. I mean, this guy is not even breathing hard, Alex said. He just landed the right hand to Lou Dilva. <laughs> And the crowd here at the Hampton Coliseum, many of them came to their feet to show their appreciation for the show Pernell Whitaker's put on today. This is the 12th round of a scheduled 12 rounder. Content to let the scorecard do the talking and is left. Right now, Greg Hogan is making the biggest payday of his career $426,000. He just looks like a fighter who, who was just taking the money and running. I mean, he just, he's standing in. You know, a guy like Hogan has built up, and, and deservedly so, such a reputation for toughness and, and such a reputation for a, a guy who wouldn't back down from anything. But he just hasn't let his hands go. It might be because he's confused. Well, Hogan had... It might be because he's dead at the weight. But uh, right now, he has to know he needs a knockout, and he's sitting there trying to fight defensively. Well, Greg Hogan won the title from Jimmy Paul and then had a couple of real wars with Vinny Pazienza. But you have to assume, Alex, that he's never been confronted with anything resembling what Pernell Whitaker has given him here this afternoon. A lot of people would say that's a mistake by Pernell Whitaker. A lot of people would say when you're this far ahead, you better just try to uh, sit back. But Pernell Whitaker got robbed the first time he fought for the title, and he isn't going to lose any room for doubt in this fight. Alex, referring to the decision, his loss to Jose Luis Ramirez in Paris. And you think the crowd here is enjoying themselves? <laughs> Almost as much as Pernell. They braved a foot of snow to be here this afternoon. Greg Haugen. She's well aware of what happened today. Hold it. That's it. That's it. Pernell Whitaker celebrating here in the ring. We'll be back with the decision, but right now, let's go back to our studios in New York and Frank Gifford. Stunning victory. We're back in Hampton, Virginia, and right now for the decision, let's go to the ring announcer, John Castleberry. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we have a unanimous decision. Judge Jim Traylor scores the fight 120 to 107. Judge Mike Glanis scores the fight 120 to 107. Judge Paul Gibbs scores the fight 118 to 109. The winner by unanimous decision, the new IBF lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker! for the title they robbed you you dominated the fight this time you seem to come on strong just to make sure there was no question at all oh well that that should answer a lot of the critics uh minds about you know whether i fade in the in the later rounds or not greg was a tough opponent and i just went out there and did what we i mean the game plan was to box 12 rounds and that's what we done it didn't seem like you had to make any adjustment during the fight at all. You just did that he took over right in round one and kept it up all the way through. Well, that's what I told you before, Alice, that I was going to go out and dictate the fight from the beginning. And, you know, even though I don't watch tapes of fighters, the first round always lets me know what's going to happen in the later round. You know, when you're an eight-year-old amateur turning, uh, beginning boxing here in Norfolk, you lost your first three amateur fights. Did you ever dream there'd be days like this? Well, I always dream, you know, dreams are for dreamers, and I dream, and uh, I figured one day I would uh, uh, win a world title, but I wanted to win it at home, and uh, thank Greg Haugen for giving me that opportunity. Uh, Lou, where does he go from here? Well, we're ready, we're ready to uni uh, uh, unify the lightweight title. We'll fight anybody who wants. This guy's a fighter. We're going to show. I hope to get right back on ABC again, give us, a, give, us a, give us a date. We're ready to come back and fight anybody at all. Congratulations, Lou. Congratulations, Pete. Greg. Very briefly, what was wrong? You just didn't seem to be able to get your punches off. No, I couldn't. You know, he's fast. He's got a hard style. We fought a superb fight. He deserved to win. Uh, I just didn't. I didn't have him timing today. Uh, you know, he was out. He out murdered me. He out quick me. Uh, he's a good fighter. He's a hell of a fighter. Thanks fought for a technical fight. I'd like to say hi to my aunt Carol. I hope she gets better. Our aunt Tan. Okay, Greg. Thanks very much for talking to us. Let's go back to Dan at ringside. Thank you, Alex, and the new IBF lightweight champion, Pernell Whitaker. That's it from Hampton, Virginia. For Alex Wallow, I'm Dan Deardorff. Let's go now back to Frank Gifford.